very coarse steps your your way towards a very fine product. And uh, T-Spines allows you the same way to, of thinking, where you are roughing out a uh, uh, a patches. I mean, really, that wasn't very elegant what you've seen. It's it was very rough and intentionally kept uh, very rough. So people might think, good lord, this will never result in anything uh, sexy. And now, now I can take all those control points and very quickly adjust them a little bit finer. Well, it would have taken a lot of time um, if I would have t started to add that kind of accuracy in, a, in an earlier stage. So T-Splines jumps into the gap. I can just go and uh, push and pull. If I would have organized the snapping a little bit better, I was a little bit lazy here with the recording. If I would have uh, chosen a little bit better snapping uh, options, then I would not select the uh, outline all the time, for example. <laughs> but um, uh, again, uh, somebody who uses this the first time, he will struggle the same way as I just uh, try to maneuver around. He will get all the, the little pop-ups, what do you want to select? But in this demonstration, I think it's pretty helpful to see that you actually get those helps uh, from all the modules involved. So it's a overall very friendly experience if you start to uh, work with uh, those tools. And what we're doing here is extremely complex, actually. The, uh, uh, all the math involved, all the geometry changes, uh, they're just incredible. And uh, what we do in the meantime, uh, in a lot of cases, is we're so confident in, in using all the stuff that we allow uh, clients to look at uh, the screen when we're when we're defining toolpaths and say, listen, this is what you want. This is better. Do you want to have it bulged out a little bit? And um, it 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 is a great way to uh, instill confidence uh, in what you're doing and uh, involves the customer in uh, stages. Uh, where he hasn't been involved before, so it's actually been very beneficial for uh, um, a new business and uh, exploiting uh, existing business a little bit better. So, yeah. if I if I can just step in one once more, so so what Rainer's done is he's blocked out the T spine. Now he's he's going in and moving the control point so that it's it's coming to within his tolerance of of his curves. There's there's definitely ways to use T spines to nail the curves at the start without having oh, to do yeah. this dragging afterwards. And I, I yeah. can show some of that afterwards, but um, but I think this is a great intro and, and probably time to move on to, to show RhinoCam now. Exactly. So this is basically the uh, the idiot's way of using uh, T-splines uh, right out of the box, um, just to snap to an outline, utilize the ability of T-splines to uh, work its magic in the background specifically regarding uh, smooth shapes, forms, um, intersections, and other nastinesses which are uh, definitely uh, giving a little bit more of a headache uh, in uh, um, other packages, even Rhino itself. So here we go, we got the, uh, the model itself and uh, now we will involve uh, RhinoCam which is uh, now the next step. I think I still have uh, that little road map but well, we're now creating, we're not playing with the meshes anymore, we'll just uh, uh, take the shape and uh, try to generate a toolpath. I prepared another scene for this, so not to cheat anything, but um, just to, uh, uh, is that one? Yeah. I don't think so. Let me just uh, be sure that I have so right, oh this is the one, okay, here we go. So I got the, the right model here, I made a jump ahead, I um, uh, created a mesh out of T-splines and I used, um, Matt criticized me for that already, um, that I used a relatively coarse uh, setting for the mesh generation. Um, he is right, it could look much more uh, sexy. Um, but for the machining, you always have to keep in mind uh, what machine um, parameters you're using and how fine do you need it. Um, this mesh here is smooth enough that if I would take a piece of sandpaper later and run it over the surface, um, I'm already better with the sandpaper than in the inaccuracies in this model. So what's been uh, showing up maybe as shading problems in a 3D demonstration is in real life laughable. It's not there. So uh, 
And this is the mesh uh, we're using. I uh, set this into a surface um, just for demonstration purposes. And I open the machine browser again. Uh, RhinoCam is a plugin which is as well very easy to use uh, right out of the start um, and which bears immense complexity if you require it. Uh, but it's not hiding the complexity, but it doesn't necessarily make it necessary to uh, delve into it too much. So, Reiner, a, excuse me, this is Joe. There was a question about what do you manufacture mesh and not the nerves, uh, and I wanted to jump in and answer that. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so actually we don't need to create mesh. Uh, uh, you know, RhinoCam can directly uh, machine the surfaces. I think Reiner is doing that just to, just for uh, convenience here and for display yes. purposes. Yes, and 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 um, uh, to make to, to point this out, uh, there is a function um, which converts the uh, T spline also into uh, uh, Rhino nerves. So it is not necessary to uh, uh, go into this uh, step here. But um, having a mesh also speeds up the uh, demonstration here. So, but the it, it's actually a good question or a good point to make because if high accuracy is required, if you'd make a mold for uh, uh, some uh, operations, uh, you want to 3D print it or anything, then uh, the NURBS model itself uh, provides uh, the uh, tool generation uh, uh, a little bit more um, freedom regarding accuracy. If you nail it down in a mesh, you, you have the creases, you have the geometry, you cannot become finer than this. But if you throw a NURPS uh, into RhinoCam, uh, then it can choose it. So that's correct. So we can we can use NURPS at this stage, um, from uh, which is generated either with RhinoCam itself, or it is a convert from uh, T splines. Um, the the T spline NURPS surfaces are awesome. It's uh, the way the patches are generated are, is 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 uh, yeah perfect. I've never seen a problem with that. So. Uh, but uh, let me go on with, um, uh, does that answer the, uh, the question for now? Uday, is that yeah, sufficient? I think so. Good. Yeah. So we have a few tabs which uh, define the uh, main uh, operation of RhinoCam. It's a setup and in which you basically define which kind of machine type you have, uh, which post processor you use. Uh, post processor means uh, addresses the part which um, um, takes a tool pass um, and converts it into a language for a machine. There are so many machines out there which speak slightly different languages that uh, there are different uh, post processors, but basically all uh, makes a machine move pretty much to the same uh, position. So this is where it defines us. Uh, this here is called Mach 3 RSC. RSC are my initials because I modified it, which also leads to a nice point uh, Maxsoft allows you to modify, add, and create those posts yourself, which is very neat. Uh, and then I can define a stock, which is a virtual material, which will be the victim of virtual cutting to see in a simulation if this is what I want to get out of it. And then I have machine operation sets, and this is empty right now. And this is filled with the create tab, which leads to the different uh, operations Max, uh, Max, uh, Maxsoft uh, RhinoCam can uh, provide. Uh, one is uh, two and a half D um, for the uninitiated. Uh, if I just have a couple of uh, circles here and a couple of uh, rectangles, I can uh, use those commands to uh, just make a, a pocket into that, uh, into those shapes and I can define the depths, but the outline is pretty much all I need for those uh, operations. Also V carving you've seen in the beginning of my presentation that uh, door segment I made. This is actually generated with the V carving um, routines from Microsoft. Uh, then I have the uh, 3D uh, strategies which are uh, uh, very, very complete. I encourage you to go to the Microsoft uh, website and download the manuals because the uh, um, strategies are uh, listed there. Um, and we have the 4D, which is like working like a gyro spit, basically, to uh, carve something out of a rotating axis. And then we have drilling operations, uh, which allow me to uh, use, to, to chuck a drill into the uh, 
a collet of my spindle and then drill deep holes, for example, while the drilling uh, is, is, is uh, slowly advancing.